Socketed duration of the urinary bladder, it is insertion of a hollow tube through the urethra for removing the urine. Okay, when the patient is not able to pass the urine or if there is any disorder regarding the urinary uh, flow, then this uh, urinary catheterization will be done. Uh, we will be discussing the indi in the indications also. So, it is an aseptic procedure for which a sterile equipment is required. So, for this procedure, we we need the we need the sterile equipment and sterile technique. Okay. Then the purposes of urinary catheterization. So, in this, uh, what what are the purposes? First one is to relieve the urinary retention. If the patient is having, if the patient is not able to pass urine, urine is there inside the patient's bladder, but he is not able to pass. In that condition, the urinary catheter is uh, used. Then, uh, second one is to obtain the sterile urine specimen from the female patient. In an unsterile technique, we all know how to uh, do the urine specimen collection, but in uh, to obtain the sterile urine specimen we need to collect from the urinary catheter by obtaining the sterile techniques there will be a separate uh, procedure for that okay but we need to have the urinary catheterization in order to obtain the sterile urine specimen then uh, third one is measure to measure the ure residual urine okay after uh, urine after passing of urine af or after voiding the patient will be the patient will not be pass able to pass all the uh, amount of urine that is uh, there in the bladder there will be some amount of urine that is left in the bladder and uh, it, it may cause <coughs> uh, certain discomfort or it might co also cause infection if there is any residual urine which remain inside the bladder so to uh, measure the ur residual urine, the urinary catheterization is also uh, done. Then uh, to empty the bladder before, during, or after surgery. So uh, during the surgery, the patient will be given anesthesia. He will, uh, he or she will not be able to uh, feel the uh, urinary urge, or he will not be able to pass. So uh, urinary catheterization is done in the patient before surgery, after or after or during then uh, next is to allow the accurate measurement of urine output okay uh, while bo uh, while uh, the patient is passing the urine himself or herself in the wash uh, in the toilet then we, uh, we might not be able to measure how much urine he, have, he or she have passed but uh, by uh, by obtaining the urinary catheterization or by doing the urinary catheterization we will we'll be we will be able to measure the accurate urine output then there are different size sizes of urinary catheter then a French scale is used to denote the size of catheter for uh, <coughs> male patient a larger size catheter is used uh, than a female patient okay for female patient small size is used like 14 or 16 are mainly used for female female patients then for male patients 20 22 friends are usually used these are the size of the catheters okay then for children 8 to 10 are usually used then types of catheter there are three main types of catheter the first one is intermittent catheter this is used to drain the bladder for short periods that is for 5 to 10 minutes it may be inserted by the patient then the second one is retention or indwelling catheter this type of catheter is placed into the bladder and secured there for a period of time. Uh, so this one is the normal catheter that we see in the uh, hospitalized patients. <coughs> okay, uh, is this will this uh, catheter will be there for a long period of time. Uh, in the uh, in the picture we can see that the uh, in the at the tip of at the tip of the catheter there will be a bulb okay there will be a bulb when the syringe when distilled water is pushed from the then this bulb will be inflated okay this will provide the retaining of the urinary catheter inside the patient's urinary bladder okay this deflated uh, end it will be inserted inside the bladder then the syringe part then the 
the, the syringe part this will be outside the patient okay if the catheter is inserted inside the bladder this bubble will prevent the coming out of the urinary catheter outside the patient's body so it will remain attached inside the urinary catheter when uh, when we want to remove the urinary catheter from the patient then only then we will deflate the bubble then third one is the suprapubic catheter this type of catheter is inserted into the bladder through a small incision okay uh, small cut will be made in the pubic area above the pubic area then the catheter will be inserted there it is used for continuous drainage then preparing for catheterization uh, catheter should be used when absolutely necessary <clears throat> then catheterization procedure itself should be done by trained personnel under sterile conditions infection is the major risk of urinary catheterization okay you urinary infection might be there if we do not provide the sterile technique so we should <clears throat> always take care while doing the procedure and then first we have to gather all the equipments like catheter this will be needed mainly then 10 cc syringe and sterile water the sterile water will be put inside the 10 cc syringe then it will be used for deflate uh, inflating the bulb then uh, cotton balls with betadine to clean the area lubricant then a sterile gloves to maintain the aseptic technique flashlight or lamp to view the area then a uh, urine collection bag will be there velcro leg strap or anchoring tape uh, tape tape is used to attach the tubings to the patient's tie then a uh, disposal bag or um, dustbin to discard the waste then we should explain the procedure to the patient nicely then provide the privacy and adequate lighting should be there positioning uh, in positioning the female should be placed in the dorsal recumbent position okay with knees flex and feet above the two two feet apart okay the patient should lie flat with the lie flat in the bed with the knees flex and feet should be uh, two feet apart then cover we should cover the upper body and the leg also then place the catheter set between the female patient's leg then in a male male patient we should provide the supine position then drape the patient we should cover the patient so that only the area around the penis is exposed then place the catheter set next to the leg of the patient okay the in a male patient the patient will be placed in the supine position so uh, as you can see uh, I'll tell you in brief what you will do first we will prepare the articles then sterile technique should be maintained that means we should wash our hands wear our gloves okay then we should um, provide the privacy to the patient explain to the patient provide the position to the patient then uh, insert the patient uh, insert the catheter uh, first we'll clean the area before inserting then after that we should um, we can uh, put the lubricant for the uh, easy access okay we, we can put the lubricant and after that we can insert the um, catheter after inserting the catheter uh, the the urine uh, urine will flow through the bag okay we will see that the urine is coming through the bag if the urine is coming through the bag then we can uh, confirm that it has reached the uh, catheter there are certain mark that is, that is uh, done in the catheter that means uh, in the 14 16 size catheter there will be certain mark in the catheter for which we have we can see uh, uh, how much up to how much length we can uh, insert for male and for female then uh, after inserting uh, after the urine has come out to prevent the uh, tube from coming out of the urinary uh, urinary meters we should place the which we, uh, we should push the sterile water through the other end through the end which is provided the, there will be um, an end which will provide uh, the insertion of the syringe then we can uh, push the sterile water 10 cc sterile water 
then after that we should um, provide enough enough water so that it remains attached inside the urinary bladder then after that uh, we can uh, adjust the tubings and all uh, then the tubing should be attached again to the patient's thigh so that it doesn't um, necessarily move around so this is a brief uh, procedure that we can uh, not well doing the while while doing the in urinary catheter insertion so after that uh, maintaining the indwelling catheter how we can uh, maintain the indwelling catheter we should wash our hands before and after carrying the patient and wear the gloves while handling indwelling catheter okay uh, if we take care of any patient uh, with the indwelling catheter then we can we should always wash our hands and wear gloves before touching then uh, we should always clean the perineal area with soap and water daily okay after, or after each bowel movement especially around the meters then uh, we should use lotion or powder uh, we should not use lotions or powder in the perineal area then uh, we should arrange for the patient to take a shower or but when permitted the collecting container may be hung over the side of the tub okay the collecting bag that means the urine bag should be hung whenever the patient wants to move around uh, while going to the toilet or while, while if the patient wants to bat then it should uh, always be hung uh, at the side then teach the patient to maintain the catheter then self-care helps the patient to develop a feeling of independence and promotes a cleanliness so we should teach the patient how to uh, how to maintain clean how to maintain the catheter and uh, how to maintain the personal hygiene when uh, when he is with the catheter if the patient is ambulatory means if the patient is able to walk then we should instruct him to use the leg bag and press the patient to take 2500 cc to 3000 cc of fluid daily <coughs> If the patient is having a urinary catheter and he is not ha having the proper amount of fluid then problems might occur a urinary, a ur a urinary infection or urinary problems might occur so we should always ask the patient to uh, take 2.5 to 3 liter of water per day then change the indwelling catheter as necessary it, uh, it depends on hospital hospital to hospital uh, when we have to change uh, it, uh, in some patients it is advised to change it after two weeks then in some in other patients one week so uh, it uh, depends on the hospital to hospital then uh, removing an indwelling catheter how to remove while removing we need 10 cc syringe why to put uh, to deflate the bubble which is inserted while uh, inserting the catheter then washcloth and towel examination gloves soap and water to wash the hands and identify the patient and explain the procedure then advise him that there will be slight burning during the removal of the catheter you should provide the privacy then the same position should be maintained while removing while inserting also we um, we have put the male patient in the supine position and female patient in the dorsal recumbent position the same position should be used while removing also then we should wash our hands put our gloves and then empty the balloon by inserting the barrel of the syringe and withdrawing the amount of fluid used during the inflation pinch off and gently pull on the catheter near the point where it exits from the meters so we should pull the catheter out of the urinary bladder or urinary meters slowly then clean the perineum or penis with the soft and water then dry the area well after this inspect the catheter to be sure of no remain uh, no remnants remain in the bladder okay, we should inspect the bladder if the, there is any sign of infection inside the bladder like clots of blood or discharge then if the catheter is not totally intact we should uh, set the catheter for further inspection 
Then empty the drainage bag, measure the amount of urine, and uh, discard. Then after that, uh, remove the gloves and wash hands, discard the uh, items, and return the reusable supplies to the equipment to the appropriate area. So we should record that the catheter was removed, at what time it was removed, by whom, and at the dead also. Then note the amount of urine which is uh, there inside the bladder while removing, then color of the urine, then clarity of the urine in the drainage bag. <coughs> and we should also document all the patient teachings done and the patient's level of understanding after removal of the catheter. We should assess a patient for 24 hours for patterns of urinary elimination. Note the time and amount of the first voided urine. After the, uh, after the uh, removal of the urine, if the patient is not passing the urine for a long period of time, okay, uh, for around 10 hours, then we should immediately report. So, that is why we should see the urinary elimination after removal of the catheter. We should ask the patient also for any burning, dribbling, or hesitation in starting the stream of urine. Then cloudiness or any other unusual color of urine should be noted. Then we should provide a level of fluid similar to the intake when the catheter was in place. That means we should uh, advise the patient to take a lot of fluid after the urine is removed. Then uh, urinary catheter is removed. Then record the catheter was removed that time and by whom. So we should not forget to document the things we have done after we have 